So thank you to Strawberry Linen who watches this and suggested that I share more personal details about myself and I will, and I'm going to. Yes, that was the whole point of that video and to introduce you to me so that I could introduce you to my experience even more. I want, I just want to, I want to connect more with people. I feel more intimate. I don't know if you can feel that energy, but I feel more connected, <laughs> trustful. It, what that really is, is that there was just this mm, small wall of separation that was all energetic. Because, you know, we're, this is an embodiment process. So talking about <clears throat> some old layers that I wasn't, didn't know was there. That's the embodiment process. So, so that's the whole thing. Like if, if, if teachers could be more honest about the embodiment process, you wouldn't think there's anything really wrong with you <laughs> that we contribute to it. Because if we, if we hide the ball about what really happens for us and then you wake up and then stuff happens for you after, but you don't have any point of reference, what's happening to me? Because it looks like teacher X just woke up and didn't suffer anymore. But here I am, I woke up to my true nature and then there's these layers. Well, no, the truth is that teacher X is just lying. <laughs> most of the time is it that teacher X there's stuff there going on but they're not sharing it that's the shame and the emotional repression that does that it's not a principal reason there's no principal reason what would be the principal reason to not be open what would it be oh I've heard teachers say well you don't want to distract from the pointers nah, that's bullshit now that's 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 the kind of thing that a mind would say that's run by repression to try to hide I don't buy it. To me, the new era is transparency and authenticity. And then therefore, it'll be the end of the guru. Because if everybody's just authentic and trust their own experience, nobody can come in and swoop in and say, I'm the Messiah. Or if they do, you can process that. Because chances are they won't, right? Because if, if, you, if you already get to the position where you're a teacher, well, watch out because teachers don't always process their stuff. So if you start thinking you're the Messiah, well, then you wouldn't process that. So let's process why before you become teachers, right? Because you can see what we teachers do, right? Ugh. We fuck it up. We fuck up the modeling of a life that is lived because we're not sharing our shit. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share my shit here. What are my triggers? So I, this is okay, but this is we're gonna. I'm gonna break this down. See, I'm gonna show you why I'm being transparent on the teaching side of things, on the personal side of things. It's just healthy for me to connect and be open and authentic. This is just healthy. But on the teacher side, so helpful. Okay, so one of my main triggers is being in a relationship with somebody really close, and it's like uh, they turn on you. Now. I didn't understand that trigger until recently when I dealt with a really deep trust issue that went all the way back. I don't really have triggers, though, now. So I can't say that this is a current trigger. Certainly in my first marriage, and in the beginning of this relationship, there was some, um, every now and then, this trigger, like, um, it would be around sometimes cleaning. Because I, you know, I have stuff around cleaning. So let me show show you to you, show show you that. When I was a kid, mom and dad were pretty incessant cleaners, the way I saw it, and I didn't feel connected to my body or to my family. But I wasn't aware of this, and the cleaning represented you're just not here. That's just how I would express it if, from the body. It's like you, it's, you're more interested in whether. The house is clean. Then, what's really going on for me? That's how it felt. So, if I perceive a partner who is close to me, who who makes things important more than the relationship, more than the connection, I become resentful. But it's all buried. Because yeah, that's how my trauma works. It's like when I get into a relationship with you. In the past, I've been watching and monitoring to see if you're the kind of person that would turn against some somebody. But I, I'm not conscious of this. You see, this was, yeah, back in the day when I was really suffering, I was conscious of the triggers, but, you know, it just became chronic pain and programming in chronic pain at a certain point 
Because again, with this work, when you make conscious the emotions with a potential trigger, immediately there's no trigger. Because, well, there's a trigger. Something happened, but you don't carry it. Because you don't carry the emotions around because you process those emotions right away. So that's now my experience. Is it because these tools can just come in immediately? It's amazing. Like, I, I went from not knowing that I'm angry to when a trigger or something happens, go immediately to that, and then freedom. I had it all wrong the whole time. By going to something else, I was prolonging my suffering and getting sick. By going somewhere other than anger, other than the place that I didn't want to go. Remember that. <laughs> of course we want to go to the place that feels better, but is that what we need? Or safer? So that's a trigger, or it always was, and it would be around cleaning, too. You see how these traumas join together? So, in other words, if, you, if you're a nitpicky partner, that's what it is. If you like walk around and you're like that and that don't do that <laughs> um so how's that gonna piss me off but I, we'll see but when i would be triggered i wouldn't have gotten angry so we're going back in time here i'm thinking about my first marriage <laughs> i want to apologize to him uh because we all ought to, ought to take ownership and I, I need to do that privately actually i've done that and he's owned his side this is what sucks. It's like you, 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 ha you have a relationship with Scott Killaby and then you become part of an inquiry for however many hundreds of people come to watch. It's not really fair. But here we go. <clears throat> so, that you know, the two traumas would join at once for me. Turn against me. So when I perceive you, you're nitpicking. It's like you're turning against me. That's that feeling of like you're picking on me like a bully. Like, what's wrong with you? There's something wrong with me. What are you doing? <laughs> and then, so there's the bully trauma. Leave me alone. Fuck you. And, but I wouldn't get angry. See, that's the key. I'd feel wounded and hurt during that relationship. See, that's safer. Yes. I'm, I'm not making fun of it. I'm making fun of me. Because I can. See, I was like, you hurt me. You hurt me. But inside, it was like, fuck you. I will destroy you. Fuck you but all tucked into pain, and I couldn't feel it. <laughs> no, really, that's what was going on, and that's why there were triggers, because that's what runs triggers, is the repressed emotion runs it, but then the repression is there holding that back, and then here comes, I'm hurt. I'm the wounded lamb. You hurt me. And I was using that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I was using that safer emotion to manipulate wasn't conscious of the manipulation though the manipulation was the snake in the grass see i'm angry see if i could have been conscious during that relationship i would have just went around and say i'm angry it has nothing to do with you sorry yeah i know i look peaceful and everything and that when we fight i don't really get angry but i'm fucking angry at you but it has nothing to do with you you could be jake gyllenhaal you could be the greatest person on earth you could walk around this this house and and think that I do nothing wrong and I'm still going to be fucking angry at you. So you have to understand that it has nothing to do with you. It's my unprocessed stuff and I have to be afraid, but I have to hide all of that from you and then play the wounded lamb so that I can get your love and stay safe from my anger. <laughs> you don't have a shot. I love you. Love you. You don't have a shot because it's a setup. You see, I'm here to relive my trauma, not to love you. It looks like I love you, but I can't love you because I have a I have a more important agenda. I need to stay safe and get love. I just didn't know any of that. So as you can imagine, I wasn't nearly as open <laughs> as I am now in my relationship now. So yeah, I was bamboozling my first husband. But only for 16 years. And only while being a teacher, I didn't know it. That that played itself out over and over again in different ways. He would pick on something. That's how I... He, he would say, well, no, I'm not picking on something. You should have cleaned up that. You should have done this. So he has legitimate thoughts and feelings on this. When I share this, that's what I've known about trauma healing. His perspective is completely valid. That was my trauma but I couldn't see it then. So I stored anger with him 
I didn't have a choice. I was I stored anger with everybody. But it was at the end of that relationship that I really started to come out of repression and and oh, so I, that relationship ended. <clears throat> but before that, I want to go back to one particular day. This is where you really tell on yourself. Like this is a back in the day when I was a knowledgeable teacher, so I would just be p- present, pointing to that or being present would have been not even being present, that was my true nature. I was a teacher in the world. This is how I showed up in relationship. So it felt authentic when he would get triggered when I didn't feel the trigger. Here's the thing. Sometimes I didn't feel a trigger because in part I was tucking my anger down in my spine, see, unconsciously. So there would be times when it would seem like I don't have anger. You do. And There's the shadow. So one time I saw that he was angry and that shadow came up for me. And, I, and the teacher thing came up. It's like, I got to help him because he's like really angry. It's, such, it's so fucking stupid. I, I'm sorry. That's embarrassing. I don't need to help him. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I want to say his name, but he deserves confidentiality. I am sorry for that. I didn't know any better. I didn't know that I was angry. So that was a shadow. <clears throat> and when he was angry there, then I punished him in different ways by not getting angry. I didn't know I was doing that, but I was also teaching him a little bit. And that's the embarrassing part. I was trying to show him how to be with the anger, but I, he didn't, he didn't ask me to do that. That's kind of actually the way that I see that is pretty violent. That's coming from repression and it looks really helpful. It isn't. It's self-protective. So as I was helping him, what I was, what was really going on is I'm fucking angry at you, but I can't admit it. So I'm going to pretend that you're the one that has the issue so we can both just ignore my anger and then I'm safe and then I get your love because if I can help you like I help other people you'll love me I'm going to throw up (laughs) I got that out I have to just throw up now no I don't really feel that there's no energy with it like oh I can't believe I did that but there's an accountability and that's that's how I express accountability and Dan does too and others cringe it's just a way of expressing something that you see in yourself. But you don't disown that thing. You know, you don't go cringe. You go, oh, I need to open to that anger that I couldn't open to. See, it's not cringe. Let's don't feel that. <laughs> it's cringe. Let's open to that. And it's just these little buzzwords that we use. Like, that's going to make me sick. I'm going to be sick. That's a way of tuning back into the body. Actually, I've, I learned that because I noticed that Dan did that early when we were developing and I was doing that, and Toshi and others were doing the puke sign in chats with each other as we came out of repression and training trainers, and we're seeing our, cell, our patterns or seeing the patterns in other people, and then we'd be like, here's this pattern, puke emoji. <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like now. <clears throat> but back then it felt like, well, I've got, I've got to show you. The nature of your experience. Fucking arrogant shit, you know? Like, <laughs> no, I didn't. I need to show up like I'm in a relationship, like anybody else does. I need to show up. So I didn't realize that. I don't need to show up as somebody who's present. I just need to show up. Just show up. Forget all the fancy spiritual stuff. Forget all the psychobabble. The way that I could have helped that relationship is by saying, I'm angry and it has nothing to do with you and I can't show it. And that's the that's the root of the problems on my side. I don't know what it is on your side. <laughs> you got to deal with that. So at the end of that relationship, before I was like just beginning to do anger repression work, and you know when you <laughs> you when you're not skillful yet, at the end of that relationship, I just regurgitated anger on him. But that had nothing to do with him, because it was just that was the volcano of years of pent up aggression that wasn't expressed and again I've already apologized and taken ownership of that but at the same time that felt good it wasn't a good thing to put on him but it was good for my soul because then I understood I can get angry I did have to really own that again later because of the way it was spilled on him it was disproportional to the moment to what was happening it was truly the volcanic anger that one who represses anger experiences. I don't really experience that anymore because of the work. It's much more embodied now and not explosive like that. 
But that's the consequence sometimes of being in a relationship, right? For so long and holding something back. I think people get divorced be- before they unload on their spouse sometimes. And the work came into my life and disrupted my repression. And so I couldn't just leave, you know, and hide like I had done so many times. I, the anger just came out. So I want you to, I want to break down that trigger before I go to the other triggers. So that turning against me, I couldn't see it. See, so let me deconstruct this for you going back. I'm going to play Monday morning quarterback. I'm going to reverse engineer the whole thing for you so you can see how your triggers work. And then you can go use the inside out or be in that path with me. So here, if he says something... I'm not aware that it's a you're turning against me. That that part of the trigger, I have to just tell you, it was just unconscious. So what was there's this let's say there's a visible realm and there's this invisible unconscious, the dark matter. The invisible realm is the programming of the trauma and the repression that I've been talking about. The visible realm is what I see, feel, hear, taste, touch in the relationship, what I'm conscious of. So when he would say, uh when he would nitpick on something. And by the way, I chose him for that. You know that, right? I mean, I chose a partner who would do that so that I could bury my anger and believe I'm unlovable. I am well aware of that now, but I wasn't then. So not aware of my own agenda, I would think that it was him. So let's say, you know, the dishwashers, he says, you're doing that wrong. Okay, so that hits something. But, it, it, but the anger doesn't come. So again, it's wounded lamb or hurt, or why are you doing that? Why are you being like this all the time? It's like you can't just relax. You see the language of it? It's like you're shadowing it out. See, you're you, you, or what's, you're so upset. Like, why do you have to be so upset about stuff? Why can't you just talk about things? This is the thing of anger repressors. And often teachers, right, or people who work in that who are trying to be nonviolent. <clears throat> so I was doing that, but I was coming from repression. So the woundedness was very hurtful, actually, because th- with that, I was carrying emotion over at first. Even with the awakeness of it, there was a trigger. I was carrying it, and I didn't know why. So I went in to process identity, right? The one who's unlovable. But what I, I never got to the anger, so I would sit there and conjure up this identity, like, there's something wrong with me. The words, the images the feelings, and it feels really deep, actually, to do that. And relatively, it is. Com- well, until you get down to the 3D work. But just being with that, sitting with all, this is why I'm saying that identity is the bypass, because the whole time I'm sitting with the woundedness, which is the safer emotion compared to anger, um, and the identity, which is safer than the buried anger, I don't know that. So I'm just resting and just letting what I think is all of it be as it is. Then I learned that, well, you have to conjure it up because the identity of um, there's something wrong with me hides. So eventually I learned again to conjure that conditioning up out of the body. For example, we do it now by saying the opposite of the identity. So if I say, I'm lovable, that's a second dimension prompt. So then here comes the conditioning to try to prove, right, that I'm, I had a different method back then, but roughly it's just the seeing of the conditioning of identity coming and going in awareness. But then the anger wasn't ever dealt with, see? So, snake in the grass. My persona was fake. So, by not going to anger, I'm in the relationship and I'm fake and I'm using presence, I don't know it though, to buffer against his anger and mine. So when I would come back to him, not processing the anger. See, the anger was buried under. So while I was looking at the identity, I didn't know that in my body, in different parts of my body, there was conditioning that said, I'm angry. I'm really angry, but I can't express it. It's not safe. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I couldn't hear any of that. or All I felt was either contraction or later on chronic pain. And so this is going on in the unconscious, and here I am resting as awareness, seeing just the visible effects of it. See, what, what's visible and what's safer was coming through. 
I didn't know all that. And by looking at what was visible and safer, I was recognizing the awareness for sure as my true nature, but it was already kind of recognized. That was helpful to see that, but then I was just bypassing the anger. <laughs> yeah, three diseases came after that. So I'm, this is serious business. I mean, <laughs> consciousness isn't serious, but the trauma subject is because if we keep missing the buried stuff, you can see what happens or what can happen. So that, that, that was the crux of my triggers in that marriage. It was just long periods of silence and peace and, you know, everything is fine. Punctuated by, you didn't put the dishes in there right, in his own way. And then like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. But all hidden in the body. Trigger. Process. Rest and see that you're the awareness. Miss the anger. And then do that over and over again. Store the anger. Be fake. To get love, stay safe. Use the presence. <laughs> I'm not aware of any of this. I'm using the presence to avoid my anger. So that relationship didn't work out. <laughs> as you can imagine. And of course, he doesn't know any of this because I've bamboozled him entirely. I bamboozled myself. So I can't go back to him until later and say that on my side of the issues, you had your issues. On my side of it, this is what was going on. I eventually said that to him and let him know, but the whole time I was bamboozling him and myself, see? So I couldn't take accountability for my part. And in fact, because of the presence, what part? What do you mean? I'm not triggered is what I would say later in the relationship as I cleared the deficiency stories, then they weren't even arising. And so near the end of the relationship, I notice I'm not getting triggered by him, not in the same way, um, because I had buried the anger so much, but at the very end is when it came out in the volcano. So that's what I mean, I just successfully buried it within with the self-inquiry. So then I get into, so then I have cancer, right? First disease, before that marriage ends, there was a trigger in the cancer. It has to do with people helping me. It wasn't that I'm going to die. Uh, it, that wasn't there. I mean, that wouldn't have been a fun process, but that wasn't the fear. There was an initial fear, but when I got diagnosed with cancer, I just remember like how much peace was there. But again, I wasn't processing my anger. So that piece was deceptive. That was me protecting against some really scary feelings that had created or helped create the cancer. Now I know that. I just couldn't tap into the anger at that point. So I went the conventional means, you know, the doctors, <clears throat> and had my testicle removed. Uh, I really wasn't dealing with the anger yet. And the trigger with people helping me. Hmm, Yeah. <laughs> Why would that trigger me? That was the trigger because people came out of the woodwork at first. And so that's the gaslight that I hear other teachers talking about. Like I have cancer and I I don't know that it's emotional repression. And I don't know the extent to which my diet might have played into it. I'm pretty ignorant, you know. So people come out of the woodworks and they're saying they're not talking about the emotional stuff though. Which is interesting. Because Dr. Sarno's work wasn't as well known in the spiritual community and... There, a lot of people thought of that as woo-woo uh, back then. A lot of people, not everybody. The, the idea that emotions create disease. So they weren't saying that. They were saying, your diet. And I was like, you don't even know what I eat. But they kept coming out like, you have to get rid of sugar. You have to do this and this. People have cured cancer. And the trigger was the anxiety that I felt from them. Like they, they were scared. And I think that was reflecting back that I'm scared. But I couldn't own that. Because with the presence, it, it drowns things out. Like, I'm saying, you tuck things in your body, and you're not always connected to what you're, how you're really feeling. And with a trigger, I eventually processed that. So that was the anger at my mom and dad helping. Uh, codependency is what it is. My dad was a child of an alcoholic. And there's addiction all throughout my family. My dad was more of the codependent type. <clears throat> so when those people came out to fix me, or I perceived like... I was like, Dad, 
<laughs> and but see, I but that's the reason that I was had cancer is that I was angry at dad, but I didn't own it. So the trigger, oh, it's perfect for this video, guys, because the trigger was uh, was hiding the anger. Let's see, the, the trigger was they're trying to help me. Um, so what does that mean about me? I'm helpless. Because that's what it felt like when dad would, mom and dad would just be like really codependent. I'm, I can't help myself here. It's just like you're showing it to me. And so, but that's anger, see? But I couldn't open to it. And that's probably one of the big reasons why I had the cancer is because I couldn't open to it. So there I did the same thing with that. Didn't go to the, the anger at dad for being helper dad. And instead I just processed the identity. Missed opportunity. At the same time, like I, I, I was at peace with those people helping me then. Because you can be at peace with something by dealing with something in the visible realm. Meanwhile, in the vi invisible realm, you miss what's running it all. I miss the fact that when people are trying to help me, that fucking pisses me off. I would totally do that differently now. Now, if I got a diagnosis and people came out to do that, I would immediately, if it was there, if there was any semblance of a trigger, it would be like, I'm angry, making that conscious. And I wouldn't have to carry that. And I, and that would get to the root of that. All right, so I'm going to do another part two, because I know you guys are getting something out of this in terms of deconstructing my triggers. And this particular device that I have, if I let the video go on for too long, it doesn't work too well and it's hard to retrieve it so I'm gonna so look for part two of this video I'm gonna try to release them at the same time